Hello and welcome to the fifth video in our series on scientific writing. Right now we're making our way through the different elements in an Ocar story. We already covered the opening, funnel and challenge in the last two videos. In this video we will look at the action. But before we get started, I have a challenge for you. Take a look at the logo for our course on scientific writing. It's a pencil drawing a squiggly line. But it's also supposed to represent something else. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. It's a famous kind of diagram seen in theoretical physics. You can leave your guesses in the comments section if you like. Okay, now that we're done with the challenge, we can move on to the action. Remember that in the action, you describe the work that you did by answering the question, what happens to address the challenge? The action makes up the main body of your paper or thesis, and it includes everything between the challenge and the resolution. This includes the methods, results, and most of the discussion. Depending on the kind of research you're doing, the methods section might be more of a theory section, which tends to be the case in the kinds of papers I write. And you have some flexibility here. You don't have to stick to naming your sections, methods, theory, or results. You can use section headings that are more engaging or descriptive. But roughly what you want to do is separate the action into two parts. What you did, and what came of it. And sometimes, the discussion and conclusion can be part of the same section. In fact, this tends to be my preference, but you can do what works best for the kind of paper you're writing. In this video on the action, I won't give so many details on how to write this. This is because there's just too much variety here. It's highly dependent on the nature of your research. But also, this is the easiest section for you to write, if you've done the research. Because it's the stuff that you're used to thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis. But what I'm going to do in this video is give you several helpful tips. We've already seen that the entire paper should follow the OCAR structure, and that the paper is typically broken up into different sections. It turns out that each section also tells its own story, and should follow one of the story structures, such as OCAR or LD, depending on what makes more sense. We'll see more about this in an upcoming video on internal structure. Another thing to be aware of is that ideally, other researchers should be able to repeat the work that we're presenting. A paper must offer detailed explanations of procedures, such as the derivations, assumptions, mathematical techniques. But in practice, most people won't repeat your work. Most people will evaluate the methods and theory to assess the credibility of the results and conclusions. And even readers who will attempt to reproduce the results likely won't want the details in their first reading. So what you should be aiming for is to describe your methods or theory at two different levels. The first is the overview of the information you were trying to gain, and the approach you used to gain it. This is for credibility. And the second is to give a detailed explanation of the procedures. That's for reproducibility. And so the best way to describe a method or theory section is to use the LD structure. The reader can get the overview first by reading just the lead of each section. And then the next time they read the paper, they can focus more on the detailed explanations. Remember in part 2, I gave the following answers to the question, what happens to address the challenge? Now what I'm going to do is convert each of these answers into the lead of a subsection in my theory section. Notice that I've also decided to name the section after the name of our conjecture. And so each of these subsections is going to tell its own little story. And you can see here that in writing the lead, I've collapsed the opening, challenge and resolution into a single short section. If you've been doing the previous exercises, you would already have some answers to the question, what happens to address this challenge? In this exercise, I would like you to flesh out the answers to this question into the lead of each subsection in your methods or theory section. In doing so, you will start writing the methods or theory section of your paper. For this exercise, remember that the lead collapses the opening, challenge and resolution into a single short section. And, as in most of the exercises so far, you should focus on structure. The writing does not need to be perfect at this stage. We will do more editing in upcoming videos. Feel free to pause the video at this time and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on this exercise. Okay, I hope you've had time to work on that exercise. And now it's time to do a background check. Earlier on in the funnel, you needed to make sure that you had sufficient background to motivate the challenge. Depending on the kind of work you're doing, 
you may need to provide some more background in the methods or theory section to put your work into context. In my example, I realized that in order for our conjecture to make sense, I need to set the scene a little bit. I need to describe the specific waveguide system we're considering. I also need to explain which particular features of the system will be relevant in the theory we're developing. Okay, now it's your turn for another exercise. I'd like you to identify any additional background material that will be needed so that the reader can follow your methods or theory section. In doing so, you will make sure that your methods or theory section is put in the right context. And remember to keep track of references so you can cite the original work properly. Feel free to pause this video and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on this exercise. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to work on that exercise. And now I'd just like to summarize this video. We've seen that the action makes up the main body of the paper or thesis, and it encompasses everything between the challenge and the resolution. You have a lot of freedom in writing the action, but keep in mind that each section and subsection should follow its own story structure. And LD is a good choice for this part, because the lead gives the reader an overview the first time that they read the paper, and the development fills in the details if the reader would like more. And make sure that you do a background check. You may be missing some background material that is important to put your theory into context. And now I have a surprise for you. It's time to do some homework. Now that you've written the lead parts of your methods or theory section, it's time to write the development parts. That is, you want to give the detailed explanation of what you did. Also, if you've identified any additional background that will be needed to put your theory into context, you will need to flesh that out as well. I know this sounds like a scary task, but keep remembering that at this stage, your writing doesn't have to sound great. We just want to make sure that we have all of the content and that it is roughly in the right place. We will come back and edit everything to make it sound beautiful later. In the next video, we will continue with the action, in particular, how to write the results section of your paper. See you next time.